Coming up, you asked us to go to Toosome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen, so we finally decided to go back. And uh, if we didn't, and this episode ends up being about something else, then I'm going to really kick myself later. So all that and more. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. <laughs> This is episode 238 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is also brought to you by DizBoards.com. If you're looking for even more information to help you plan your Universal Orlando vacation, head over to DizBoards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Ryan Clevin. Hello. Hello. You're wearing me on your shirt today. I am. Yes, I'm also I'm wearing a rhino on my shirt today. Actually, to, to be more specific, I'm wearing multiple rhinos, and I'm loving every second of it. And let's be real. The only reason I wear this shirt is because, A, I hope that rhino will also wear this shirt it's at the exact same time, and, B, uh, the color of blue really makes my eyes pop, in my opinion. You can tell me if I'm wrong. But Isn't I mean, it green? I mean, it's a blue-green. Seafoam at best. I, I would say seafoam, but I mean, you know what? You got to add a little blue and green to make <laughs> seafoam, true. I think. So uh, that's all. This has been uh, engaging audio listening for you out there right now, hearing our dulcet tones with with blue green talk and all of that. So, hey, hey, everyone, welcome to this week's episode. We have a fun episode for you, and we'll get to that in just a second. But first off, I wanted to uh, once again thank everyone who was able to watch us live last week. I know it was under not ideal conditions and we are having between not having a studio show that didn't make anything really easier but then we also had issues with uh, streaming over where we did the show at my house so it was a whole lot of uh, bad stuff going on right at the same time uh, but we still put out a, a little fun halloween episode for you and if you had the chance to watch it or, or join us when we were doing it live i appreciate it and if you didn't you know what you're not missing much by skipping that one but i do believe that this one is a nice fun one to jump back in on because uh, we are going to eat at to some chocolate emporium and savory feast kitchen something mm. that uh, it's i think it came up in the live q a last week and it's come up a couple times here and there lately i don't know if it's the same person and i've just been ignoring them but we've been getting asked quite a bit here and there about if we've ever done a review at Tucson and it dawned on me that it has I think I answered it back when I originally the question came to me but at that point you know Rhino and I both not together but uh, individually and I think one or two times together actually we've, we've gone to Tucson and when friends are in town or mm -hmm. family anything like that so it's it's been we've we've gone regularly but I guess, yeah, we haven't done a formal review of it on this show since we did our first review, and that was it, years ago. It opened September 2016. That's crazy to me. Yeah. So, yes, it's taken us three years to get back and do another formal review of it, but we figured uh, for that reason that we have to do that. And uh, it's, you know, it's something that I, I'm excited about. So I know... I know the the quality every time I've went it's it's felt like it's been just as good as those first couple times and you know it's they've they've had issues with some uh, cleanliness in the past too before too something that we didn't really talk too much about on this show but nor did I read too much into because yeah. I didn't want it to ruin it for me but from what I understand a lot of those issues were taken care of and I haven't seen them pop back up since they originally happened so you know what I'm I'm feeling game about it. I'm 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 feeling like we can give it a another fair chance and and the menu is so extensive. There's there's so much to choose from. It's I feel just, like it's diverse too. It's got a lot of yeah. It's like yeah. you it does, it's like breakfast, lunch, dinner. What do you want? Yeah. You can get it all whenever you want. Exactly. It's it's like the Denny's of Universal. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's what we're choosing to do. And Chocolates over my hairy. <laughs> like moons over my hammy. That's o- over your hairy what? <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I think over think. your hairy what? <laughs> In the theme park. <laughs> okay. My Potter. Gross. <laughs> You're not making it any better. <laughs> not even a little bit. Moons over my hammy. I'm. That's what it's supposed to be. No. I get what you're going for, <laughs> but no. Should have said, I don't know what I should have said anymore. <laughs> it's probably better that way. It's probably better. Terrible. Yeah. It's just, you didn't think about the hairy. <laughs> now that's all I'm going to think about while we eat there. Ugh. <laughs> what hairy things has this chocolate been on? Maybe just, <laughs> maybe avoid the chocolate. Don't get the chocolate. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, yeah, uh, and like I said, I believe in the cold open. Uh, you know, with any of our reviews, there's a chance that uh, we, we go in to do one thing and then we end up doing something completely different. So if we ended up doing something completely different, well, that's going to be fun because, of course, we're recording the review after we actually record this in-studio portion. So uh, let's stop wasting time. Let's cut over to Universal Orlando and see what we think of Tusum and or whatever we decided to do. We have made it to Universal City Walk. I have grown three inches. Yes, uh, Rhino is now taller than me. I guess years of hunching over has finally uh, cost me my my height, but it's okay. We're standing right outside of Tusum Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Looks like we are gonna be able to eat there just like we promised you, so uh, I'm excited. I'm hungry, it's lunchtime. Mm -hmm. It's actually, we're like right at lunchtime for once. Usually we're either really like right ahead at the end of it, or right yeah. at the end yeah so perfect uh perfect time to go in get some food doesn't look busy we'll let you know what we think as we go Okay. Try to match the dessert <laughs> to you. Sunday milkshake, baked good. Hmm. I say milkshake or baked good. Okay. Yeah. Scale of one to ten. How much chocolate are we talking? Uh, like a six. Okay. That's what I expected. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I expected. Yeah. Chocolate bread pudding. Oh, I love bread pudding. Hello. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, this is not a test, but do you eat your ice cream pudding separately, or do you put the ice cream on top? I like to do a little bit of both. You're going to start with the pudding by itself, you know, so you get that warm, follow it up with a shot of the ice cream. Not then, bad, yeah, not yeah, bad. Yes, you know what you're doing. Yeah. You can be trusted with the <laughs> pudding, definitely. I think this is great because you get three different types of chocolate. Oh, okay. You can't say no to that. Yeah. And then you like to choose baked good or an ice cream. Get both. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Flip <laughs> and keep going. I don't know who shock ate all of our pumpkin. We might still have our pumpkin. Okay. Um, I'll have to ask him. I did get sort of overzealous for that. <laughs> On Halloween, I ate quite a few. Oh, well, you have to. Yeah. Like to celebrate. Yeah. 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 Now, what we have, you've had. I've had key lime, yeah. Fun. Yeah. If you love coffee, that's another favorite. Okay. Wine. How do you feel about cheesecake? Oh, it's the best thing ever. So if presented with an entire cheesecake... You just eat it yourself, yeah. No sharing, yeah. (laughs) I think by not sharing, you're being kind. Yeah, yeah. Because then you're allowing the other person to choose whatever they want. Exactly, yes. There's no compromising, compromising... Selfish. I like that, yeah. And the other person's not using the paper? Yeah, exactly. So, this one, if you ever wanted to eat an entire cheesecake... Okay. It's quite promising. Okay. You've got to go for the thing that's hardest to find. You're never going to find something like that somewhere else. Okay. Something like that's a bit harder to find as well. Mmm, okay. So I say... All right, lots of choices, yeah. And this one... Okay. ...is my version of cookies and cream. 
so if you're feeling classic with a bit of a toothsome thing, okay. that one's quite fun. Awesome, perfect. Mm-hmm. Oof, so so we get yeah. your meal, just get the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're sitting down. We are on the second floor, which has a really nice view of City Walk. I always enjoy it up here. Um, we have our menus. We've ordered our food. Um, this menu is uh, has a lot of options, a lot of really interesting drink options. I personally recommend uh, one of the chocolate old fashions. Uh, they're really good, but I didn't get one today because, you know, it's before noon when we're recording this, but lots of cool stuff. We had a fun interaction with Penelope who came over. Um, we, oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, that threw me for a loop a little bit. We had a fun interaction with Penelope and we have ordered our food, so I feel like we've made some pretty decent options between the two of us and we are just waiting on our appetizer to come out and obviously we'll talk about that when we get it, but so far so good. Our appetizer has made it to the table, something that was a choice of rhinos, but also something that I can get on board too. Uh, with. I can get on board with as well. You better. So uh, it's because it's something that I love and I think the world loves and millennials love. And this is uh, their version of avocado toast. Here they do it as avocado bruschetta and it is fresh avocado, fried avocado, avocado crema, tomatoes, balsamic reduction, and a toasted crotini on top of that toasted crotini. And it is $8.95. You get four pieces of avocado toast the sorts and it is avocado overload so I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this here and then shove it in my mouth and let you know what I think away we go it's a big bite it's a big bite for a big man but, oh my, this is excellent. I mean, first off, it is just plain bursting with avocado, like all over the place and, you know, perfectly ripe avocado. The, the tomatoes, just El Pat, help. lost the H on that one. The, the tomatoes just help uh, add to this entire dish, you know, just a, not a crunch per se, but just a little bit of sweetness and then the same you get from the balsamic reduction. You get a nice sweetness there. Uh, I, and then the toasted crotini, it is, it is toasted, but it's still soft. So it's not like, it's not like when you get bruschetta and it's like big crunch and everything just falls apart or you can't even bite through it. This is really nice and delicious. And I mean, the avocado itself is creamy, but then add on the crema too, and it's like extra creamy, creamy. I can't keep this from you any longer, Rido. You have to dig in. I'm gonna try it for the same size bite. This is not gonna be pretty. Though. chilled too so I feel like after being outside when it's like 90 degrees this is actually like kind of refreshing um the balsamic on it is really nice too uh I was a little like eh, fried avocado I don't know but it actually gives it like a nice texture um and you're right about the the bread underneath being soft and mm. Like it all, it all comes together and it works really, really nicely. I think this is a really nice shareable appetizer for for nine bucks too. I feel like it's not that bad. You're getting a pretty good amount of avocado, and I like when it's four. I hate when things are threes because then you come with like two people and you have to cut it in half. And I'm like, I want more from me. But um, the balsamic on this is actually like really, really good. I'm a fan. I think you said it all, though. I am still riding that high from the avocado bruschetta, but uh, moving on to our entrees now, I am blown away by mine. I went with the French toast patty melt. It is challah bread, half pound house-made 
fresh hamburger patty, a sunny side up egg, grilled pork belly, cheddar cheese, and then served on the side with uh, Lyonnaise, Lyonnaise potatoes. I know, I should have looked up the I pronunciation. Think I think it's Lyonnaise. Lyonnaise, okay. But and, I don't know how to say anything. So yeah, yeah, I should have looked it up. I apologize for that. Uh, this is from the brunch all day served menu served all day menu reverse that around uh so yeah i always like to get something brunch related when we're here since they do have it uh and it is 12.95 and when i said i'm blown away i haven't actually tasted it yet i'm just talking about the portion and presentation i mean it is it almost looks disgusting like it's just so much meat and meat and potatoes and grease and everything all coming together on there but it's so shiny it's sh it is shiny you you made the remark that it's shiny and it is so i'm going to cut in and i'm gonna i want you to watch me cut into it because i think it's going to be entertaining like, oh my gosh look at this Damn. okay so i have everything in this first bite and <laughs> drop the little egg. At least it wasn't on your face. Okay. This thing is super, super complex. Because it really is that ultimate blend between sweet and savory. The French toast, you know, it tastes like, it almost tastes like French toast sticks that you have as a kid and you know, some restaurants and stuff, and so that's excellently sweet, but then with the hamburger patty and the pork belly and the egg, you are adding that complete salty, savory side to it. The cheddar cheese is really sticking out to me, so it uh, it's very cheddary on top of all that, too. Every flavor is finding a way to pop out in this dish, from the, the bread to the... Honestly, to the cheese and the, the egg and the pork belly, I think the hamburger patty is actually what's standing out least. And that's surprising considering that, you know, it's a half a pound. But also with that, I think it probably would, you know, it, it sat for like about two minutes here while we were doing our, uh, doing our photos and videos of it. And I'm sure it sat in the window for like a minute. So I asked for it to be medium, and it's it's medium well. So uh, it it lose that on a little bit of juiciness because of it. But I think the egg yolk looks like it might make up for that a little bit. The egg yolk does make up for that. I'm just gonna try the potatoes a bit. So mm. the potatoes are excellent too. They are. I can smell just, the potatoes. Oh man. They are thin, so sliced, you know, like scallop potato style. Um, seasoned pretty basically with salt and pepper, but it doesn't need that much more beyond that. And you know, a little bit of fresh herb on there. And Oh, I'm gonna feel terrible after this meal, <laughs> but I'm going to love every second of it. But Rhino, yours is a little interesting, so we're gonna cut over to you, see what you think about yours. I went with something that might seem a little bit basic, but I feel like it is not basic because nothing here is basic, which is why I like it. But um, I went with the tuna melt madame, and the tuna melt madame is challah bread, tuna, tomato, gruyere, spinach, red onion, cucumber, and a sunny side up uh, egg. Um, that's all for $13.95, or you can get it without the egg for $12.95. But if you're going in here, you should probably just go all in. You can get it served with a side of fries or kettle chips but also a salad so I went I opted with the, the salad just because I'm trying not to eat a bunch of fried food even though there's cheese and a fried egg and everything on top here so whatever um, what I love about the salad right away um, is that it's a bunch of like arugula and um, the, the, the tri mix and stuff like that so uh, it's not it's not just your basic um, Craig I can't remember the lettuce I don't like What's the one that no one Iceberg? Likes? Yeah, iceberg, yeah. Romaine? Romaine, both of those. You know, you got some mixture here. But my sandwich is a, an open-faced sandwich. It's a pretty heaping portion of tuna that is on here. Um, and this fried egg looks perfectly cooked, too. Perfectly cooked. Um, I'm going to try just a little bit of the tuna on the side here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice, um... 
chunks of the whole white tuna in there. Um, I don't even know how to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. I don't know if you want a picture of this ridiculousness or not while I do this. Once again, Rhino does not know how to use a knife. Nope. This is gonna be an ongoing thing for us, a struggle. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna try and do the Craig. I think I got everything, the egg, the tuna, all the veggies. Okay, it's pretty good. Um, you know, we did let it sit for a minute or two while we were doing the pictures and the videos, so this egg did come out like piping hot, so now it's definitely cool to to room temperature, but it's still nice and runny, um, and it adds that nice kind of, um, like, I, I don't know, it adds a really interesting flavoring to the tuna. Um, but what's great is the uh, challah bread underneath here, because it's such a thick piece of bread, it hasn't gotten <laughs> gross or anything like that, it's still nice and fresh, and... I don't know, I like it with all the veggies in here and everything. Um, very particular about tuna. Um, but so far, so good. I'm enjoying this. I think I have to take, take a couple more bites. I know I know. I said it seems basic, but I'm getting a lot of different uh, flavors here from the egg and the, the veggies and the whatnot. Well, why don't you take one bite right now, mm. and while you're chewing, you can start pouring your salad dressing. Oh, yeah, I could. And oh, yeah. You don't have to talk with your mouth or your mouth full. You can just... You didn't bring the zoom lens to go all the way back to my uvula? I didn't. Um, no. No. Wow, look at that pouring. Oh. That's pretty excellent pouring. And now that bite is its not in your mouth anymore. It's, it's gone. Getting... It's weird how it was salad. <laughs> salad. So it's, know. you know, just leaves. Uh, leaves, just leaves, just the greens, onions, and uh, two pieces of tomato here. So a little basic, but like I said, it's the type of lettuce I like. Mm -hmm. So my first question is, what type of citrus is the citrus vinaigrette? You don't know. You can't distinguish it. It's not like a raspberry. It's, it's a, not. It's not well, raspberry. It's not a berry. Vinaigrette. That's no. That was stupid on my part. What? That was stupid on my part. A berry and citrus are two different things. Citrus would. No. Well, sometimes they have like raspberry citrus vinaigrette. Yeah, yeah, but a berry and citrus are two very different things. I want to say this is lemon. It's a, it, it's almost like a, a creamier vinaigrette, but um, I do really, really like that a lot. Um, that's really good. So if you are getting a side salad, I recommend that that vinaigrette. And the greens and everything are all very, very fresh, so it's getting a nice crunch. And um, I'm probably actually gonna cut up some of the sandwich and just start putting it on top of this, and mix it all together. To be honest with you, but leave me alone and let me. Eat. We finished our entrees, and I should have taken actually a, a, a photo or a video of it, because we actually, like, finished every little bit of it. I think Rhino left one piece of arugula with his, and it was, uh, it, we'll, we'll talk about that more in the outro, but, you know, I think that that bodes well that we were able to finish it all. And I am extremely full. I'm pretty sure Rhino's full, too, but you can't come to Tucson and not get something something for dessert and you know they're known here for their extravagant milkshakes and such and i just uh, i'm i'm not wild about milkshakes all the time i think rhino's kind of in that boat too so we wanted to go with one of the other desserts and we decided to do the triple chocolate bread pudding it's three types of chocolate chocolate cake and white chocolate ice cream and this is 850 and it's a beautiful little presentation here, the little crock for the bread pudding in there, and the, the ice cream holding up very strong, I have to say that too. Melted just slightly, but you can tell that uh, it's holding its form, always like that, so. Here we go. So gooey. I'm going to shove this in my mouth and then I'm gonna hurry back over to the ice cream, get a scoop of that, and do it all together. I feel like that's my method. Well, I'll take a bite by itself Just here first. Just hold that hot uh, dessert in your mouth by itself. Mm. Oh, this is working with me today. Okay, 
Oh, the, the, the white chocolate ice cream. Gooey. Gooey. Holy cannoli. It's chocolate overload while not being chocolate overload. I know that makes no sense. But I'm digging this. Rhino, get in while it's hot and cold. I love bread. I love bread pudding. I am gonna do what you did, follow in suit here, and do a little, ooh, look at the steam on that. It's gooey. Mm. This tastes just like a freshly baked cookie. There's a little bitter dark chocolate in that part. See, now I'm gonna go in. Oh, I thought I was cool. You dropped it? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get it all in there. I'm gonna poke it. There we go. Now I'll get it all together. Yeah. Oh snap, that is delicious. Yeah, oh, so good. That ice cream is off the chain. Um, it's not, I actually don't know that I would have identified this as white chocolate ice cream, to be honest with you, unless you had, had said it to me, but I love the chocolate crumble around it because it adds this nice texture to the ice cream. Um, like, it makes it almost crispy, and this bread pudding, oh my god. It's, it's the right amount of chocolate. It, it's the right <laughs> amount of, like, sometimes you get a bread pudding and it's like, not super mushy or too mushy. It's like a fine line, I feel like, for me, but this is like the perfect consistency. And, and you're right. You don't like chocolate, so it's I'm not, not a too big, much. Yeah, I'm not a big, big chocolate person, especially with the darker chocolate, which is kind of what is drizzled along the top here, but I will say, like, I agree with Craig. There's just enough that if you are somebody that's on the fence about that, sharing it is a good idea. I mean, I think this is shareable, period. But, oh, yeah. But you're right, yeah. Because it, it really, even, you get that bitter kind of chocolate taste, but then it just, it leaves you with that warm, freshly cooked cookie. Mm. Like a little, like, a little warm culinary hug. We're buying for this is good. We're finished! I'm full. Full, full, full. I am disgustingly full. Yeah. We did not finish our dessert, and I don't feel bad about it because I... I don't remember the last time I've had a meal that substantial. No, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not an appetizer meal dessert person. Yeah, no. We. I mean, I usually only do it if we're out doing these reviews yeah. at a table service, and so we felt like we had to do that to get the the full experience and give you a little taste of everything. And I think we definitely did that. And my biggest takeaway is that everything here at Doothsome is still excellent. Yeah, everything that we got, I feel like we got nothing was, you know, it was how it was supposed to be, and it was also made really well. So yep. everything, there was nothing, there was nothing off. You yep. know, everything it felt like was at its best. Our service was excellent. Our, our uh, server, Allie, was fantastic. Um, and then the interaction with Penelope, like, she came back around again and, like, watched us, like, order dessert, and she was like, it's happening. Like, yep. and so I, I appreciated that. You know, I, I really enjoyed all that. And I... I actually, I also thought it was really well paced. Out. Yes. Like, I, I feel like they didn't just, like, drop the dessert right when we done eating. Like, she gave us a minute. And I don't think it was like, oh, it's slow service or anything. I think they were literally timing it out for yeah. us. Yeah. No, in that circumstance, you're right. It wasn't slow service. It was, it was good service. It's what you would hope for from a server. Yeah. I will say that I, I... I'm glad that I didn't make a comment about it earlier, but I will do it now. I started getting a little uh, worrisome there because when we when we showed up and went inside, you know, it was still early before noon. No one was really in yeah, there. Wasn't a ton, the, like, just a couple tables. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah it, a handful of tables, maybe like 10 total, and it's a massive restaurant. So when we put our name in immediately, and no one else was standing around waiting for a table. Like, they're like, okay, wait to the side. And we waited probably about three, four minutes. Yeah. So it was, like, kind of confusing. Like, where are you looking for a table? Yeah. I kind of figured that, okay, well, they probably only have one server in each section. And if they would have put us anywhere immediately, that server would have got double sat. And that's never really nice because that kind of puts them behind a little bit. So thought that maybe something like that was happening, and that's pretty much what did. There was, 
there was like four sections open around the restaurant and only one server in each. So the only criticism I will give on that is that, you know, it's it, maybe some times of the year they can justify not having a, a better service staff right out the gate. But today it could have been it could have been helpful at the beginning. But then once once uh, everything kind of fell into place, literally Allie was a hundred percent perfect, and it wasn't oh, her yeah. fault ever yeah. from the beginning. That's just everybody how was restaurants very friendly work. too, because yeah. the other there were two other servers that kind of swung around and were like uh, you know made like a comment or something like yeah. that here and there, and so that I thought that was nice. But I honestly this was like I do enjoy coming to some like and I I was saying I think the last time I had been here was earlier this year or maybe the end of last year, but. Um, this was maybe like one of my best experiences here too. Like, yeah. Oh, we it was easily. very pleasant. Yeah. Like it was the right amount of people in there. Although we had like kind of a loud table, it, like behind us when it got started. But you know, business people being business people, want yeah. everyone to know they're businessy. Yeah. But uh, and then I think it can't never be said enough, especially at Tusum, the price for the meals versus oh, yeah. the portions you get is out of control. I, I think it's uh, like unfounded almost in a Disney park. And it's not just like, Universal, oh. Universal though, we're uh, here. I am so sorry. Uh, it is unfounded to find that at Disney, but. A Universal, I feel like it's a little better. But uh, I, what I will say is that it's not just quantity either. It was, everything was quality. Yeah. So it was really nice to have that. And then uh, the discount that you got as an annual pass holder. Yeah, you, you always get a discount here as an annual pass holder. So keep that in mind if you are a pass holder or thinking about becoming one. But right now, because of the time of year it is, they are offering an additional uh, discount for for the holidays. And so it was like 25% off. So we had an appetizer, two entrees, and, and a dessert. dessert. Yeah. We each got just water, no alcohol or anything. The original price for it was 40 I think I said $47. Yeah, so and it was under 50 I know. Yeah, it was under 50 and then, you know, suggested between like 7 to 8 to $9 for a tip. After the discount, it came out to be $35. Yeah, I opened the book because she said it next to me, uh, and I was like, this can't be right. Like, this has to just be the two, like something on here was comp. I read the receipt. Nope. Yep. Yeah. No, so I, I was I, like, wow. Discount or not, I think it's a steal. Yeah. It's an absolute steal. Oh, yeah. Steal I here. think full price. I think everything we got in the whole meal, I would have, if they were like, oh, sorry, we don't do discounts during lunch, I think I still would have been totally yep. worth it. Yeah. Still worth it. So, and same prices for dinner, too. So, lunch or dinner, yeah. open starting 10 30. And, up and till midnight. just to be clear, his, yeah, he said it in the video, but the brunch all day, all the items you can get all day. Yep. So, so, Excellent. So I'm happy to report that Tusum is still kicking it. They are still excellent here and it will hopefully not, not be quite as long for both of us to the next time we come back to do a proper review, but looking forward to the next time we actually do a review. So let's go back to the studio, Rhino. And we are back. Mm. That's fun. Wasn't that an experience? You know what? Of all the experiences we had that week, that was the one that we had there mm. doing that exact sure thing. Was. And I can say firmly that I will not do that twice. But very, very exciting. So, uh, yeah, that was that was our take on that. And, and well, hopefully it'll just be the, the first of many more things that happen of the future. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, one does hope the future keeps moving. <laughs> yeah, one does hope. So uh, we have a lot to look forward to. Christmas is coming soon, so we've got a media event that I just realized I didn't tell you about at yep. this point. So it's, yep. um, I was wondering. It's well, you're not going to be happy. I know. Oh no. Yeah. When is it? It's a Saturday. What Saturday? Uh, it doesn't really matter what Saturday, but it is a Saturday. No, I don't care as long as it's not this Saturday. I think it's the sixteenth. Okay, it's fine. So yeah, yeah great. Idea. The day before I run my race too. Yeah, fun. It'll be fine. Uh, it's a five k. Come on. I have to rest. <laughs> it's a five k, and I'm not trying to insult anyone out there, but uh, it's you know it's. I'm I'm just gonna say it's. It's a rhino has rhino runs basically two miles every single morning. I run three now. Wow. And now I've hurt my leg. All you got to do is get that point one more and you're there. So I'm sorry if I insulted any 5K runners out there. I am. I'm with you. I 
I think it is a huge accomplishment, but uh, Rhino can definitely handle staying up late and then running a 5K the next day. I think we can all agree on that. He doesn't need that extra sleep. I know people who run the half marathon at Disney and they go to Ohana the night before and gouge Good themselves Lord, on not salty meats. Vomit while you're doing the race. Like, like, you ugh. just got to do it. It's like you Michael ju- Scott loading up on that pasta right before yeah. he does his fun run. Well, that did not end well for him, though. So uh, that, that should be kept in mind. But we're just going to answer one question here at the end, of course. At the end of most of our episodes that aren't question and answer oriented, we do take a question, uh, usually two, and we answer it and do that and uh, so of course if you're watching this please leave your questions in the comments down below if you're listening to this somewhere head over to youtube.com slash disunplugged get to this episode and leave your comments in there for us and we will potentially answer them so like doing that so this and uh, this one's kind of a uh, one kind of interesting one so this one comes from uh, sunburst cloud breaks and said hi guys if your circumstances permit you to do just one park Islands of Adventure or Universal Studios Florida, which one would we do? So they are big Disney fans. They have an 11-year-old son and a 6-year-old daughter. They don't know much about Harry Potter, so it wouldn't matter to them if they did anything in that section. They are coming Thanksgiving week and not going to fight crowds at both Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure and decided to choose one and then get Express Pass. They're staying at Cabana Bay and plan to utilize the extra hour in the morning. I'm. Um, I think I'm gonna say Islands of Adventure because what did what day did you say they were gonna be here? Christmas. Uh, they just Thanksgiving? said Thanksgiving week. Okay, because I'm. Assu- I'm assuming at this point, um, Seuss Landing will be all decked out for the holidays, and you'll have the Grinchmas going on, um, which you can do at Islands of Adventure. Um, plus, with those with those ages, I feel like they would still really appreciate the Seuss area. I think even not having a be, be a fan of Harry Potter. I think you could still appreciate the area, enjoy the attraction. Then you've got like the Marvel stuff, and then the cartoon. Um, well, the cartoon area doesn't have Toon any Lagoon. attractions in it right now because it's walled off. Right? Are they both dry right now? Um, and the only one it might have is the Ripsaw Falls because I believe the Popeye area is closed, is yeah. walled off. So. Last time I was there, Ripsaw was definitely up, but I haven't walked. That, that was that was yet. up when I was yeah. last there, but the Popeye area is closed for sure. Um, but anyway, yeah. th- th- so I think there's that. I think that's what I would maybe lean toward. Spider Man's an amazing ride. Plus, I feel like if you're only going to ever do one, I think Spider Man and Forbidden Journey are probably two of my not probably are two of my favorite theme park attractions anywhere in the world so yeah i you know what i'm gonna have to agree with you for the most part i feel like you know the the difficult part is universal studios florida might be it might be a little bit more closer in a kindred spirit to a disney park you know specifically hollywood studios but so it might be an easier transition to move from there to universal from disney to universal studios however islands of adventure you know it was created by a lot of ex-imagineers and people who had the same concepts and ideas so it does have that it does have that same feeling at disney as you go throughout it i mean it's Mm. Port of Entry, I think, is a beautiful entryway, despite mm-hmm. there not being much besides the shopping and dining. I think it's it definitely sets the tone for you walking in. Seuss Landing, especially, like you said, at this Christmas time of the year, uh, you really can't beat it. It's decked out with Christmas decorations. Grinchmas is I mean, what, awesome. What was the Grinch dining thing that we did at Circus McGurkis? Yeah, the the breakfast fun. with Grinch and friends. Yeah, so that you was have fun. yeah you have experiences like that. I once you make your way and in, in you know Cat in the Hat and uh, the trolley and in the sky. high in the sky so, trolley Seuss train ride high in the sky Seuss trolley train ride. I think they're both perfect for both the ages. You said eleven year old son oh, and six-year-old yeah by myself anyway yeah, yeah exactly uh lost continent there's not a lot there in terms of depth that anyone cares about yeah. except it is beautiful and it's really a marvel i mean it's it is some of the most beautiful theming you will see in any parks whether it's disney or universal the wizarding world you might not be a fan but you'll still walk in and be like holy cow if you got three attractions in there you can go on because you you, the kids can there's the kids coaster with hagrid's um uh the hippogriff flight of the hippogriff hippogriff. sorry not hagrid's but i mean you could do hagrid's i mean 
Hmm. Are they, I don't yeah. know if they're doing child swap, are they? Because uh, I'm assuming the three-year-old can't do it. It's not a three-year-old, six-year-old. Oh, and I six-year-old, I feel sorry. like you're you're right there. I mean, every child is different, obviously. Like, Some are a little shorter than other. Uh, no, Hagrid's is 48. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hagrid's is 48. Oh, yeah, so maybe, that and maybe. Forbidden Journey, yeah. it's right on right on the line. I, th- I feel like. I mean, I was a taller kid, so I was able to do a lot more. So I can't really speak to that. I've, you know, I, I've seen the heartbreak of kids who aren't tall enough, but uh, it's it, so you, you know going into it. That's that's a good thing to look at too. If if they're definitely above forty eight, maybe not at that Hulk level though, then it's a good. Uh, I think that's a good age range to it. So uh, you know, a lot of water rides in Universal. So if it ends up being cold that week, you're probably not going to utilize them at Islands of Adventure, but. Not really, in my opinion, not really a big deal. Uh, really, it's in terms of like the theming, the only letdowns, in my opinion, is Marvel Superhero Island and Toon Lagoon. But with but, Marvel having an 11 year old yeah, son, yeah, I was gonna say to a younger person, it's I even if your son doesn't care about comic books, I think that I think that just the Hulk will be an awesome ride for them. Spider Man, unless your tr- kid's truly afraid, but. You know, that and Spider-Man are two attractions that are like, oh, yeah, that's like when I was 11, 12, 13, those would have been like my rides. I would have wanted to to come there just to do those because back then that's that's the kind of stuff that I liked, especially stuff like the Hulk. So uh, I think I think Islands is definitely the most could be the most well-rounded. You know, that's not to say that there isn't benefits to to Universal Studios Florida, but also it. Universal Studios Florida, like you have the Christmas Parade, the Macy's Holiday Parade, if that's what you're interested in. But then we forgot about the the Hogwarts Castle Christmas projection show that would be oh, happening yeah, yeah, yeah. that time, too. So there's a lot of selling points for Islands of Adventure. And maybe Christmas isn't a, a selling point to you, and that doesn't matter. But I, I feel like... I, I don't know. I feel like Islands of Adventure is a little bit more different while still feeling the same. And... Yeah, that's I'm I'm kind of with you on there, but I'm also at the point where it's like, okay, well, if you're only doing that like one time there, and you're staying Kong. at Cabana you Bay, say Kong though, yeah, Kong Kong's, Jurassic Park, yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of stuff there, and uh, but, Pterodon Flyers, you're only going to be able to do this now with the children, yeah, and but to continue on with the sorry, <laughs> talking about attractions, I was just going to say too, I I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the reasoning behind they don't want to fight crowds at both parks so they're only doing one uh but if you you're express. using yeah if yeah. you're gonna if you're going in on express and if you already purchased all this i apologize because this won't help you but i would just spend the extra money if you're gonna get the park to park express and park to park passes even during the busiest weeks it, I feel like you can still get everything done, mm-hmm. especially with early park admission and then throw on express. You're still going to get everything done in both parks without like super fighting crowds and without yeah. weighing yourselves down. It's, it, it's possible. It's very possible. So I would consider that as an option, but you don't have to, don't have to listen to me. I'm just giving my advice on this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah, that's our question for this week. And, uh, we will, we will answer more next week. Maybe. Maybe not. Can't tell you. Can't tell you. It all depends on if you ask us those questions. So once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave those questions in the comments down below or just any other random comments. And if you're listening to this somewhere, head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash disunplugged, and leave your questions here. So, uh, well, Rhino, I think that's going to do it for this show. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much to everyone out there for listening and watching. And of course, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell so you get notified when we have new videos. And uh, on top of that, too, leave comments, hit that thumbs up. Be good stuff. And if you're listening to this on any of the platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, whatever, if you can subscribe to us and rate and review us, that would mean a lot. So uh, the more the more you do that on the listening devices, the more people can find out about us. So it is very helpful if you, you do that. So thank you very much again to everyone out there for listening and watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you next week for another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still have not changed the name.